I'll start this video with a quick apology. The kitchen was in a little bit of a mess by the time I decided to make this video. I had already been cooking that morning, but a couple of people had asked me about this video, so I thought I'd do one quickly for you guys. So I've just added half a cup of gluten-free water chestnut flour to a bowl. I've added about a half a cup of water, And now I'm going to drizzle just a tad of olive oil in there. I love a nice unfiltered olive oil full of phytonutrients. Today I'm adding um, a little bit of chopped up chives, which are high in the histamine lowering quercetin bioflavonoids and uh, many beneficial phytonutrients. I've added a clove of garlic, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, a tiny bit of Himalayan pink sea salt because I think it's pretty. And now I am mixing it all up and you'll notice it's going absolutely everywhere. You can absolutely use a blender for this. There is no reason I'm doing this by hand other than I had a bowl in front of me and very little time. So I just thought I'd get started. What you can't see here is that I already have a pan on the stove with a little bit of olive oil getting nice and warm. And here it is. So now I am just swirling the olive oil around, making sure everything's nice and coated. Now here's the tricky part. You're going to get your flour mixture and you're going to very quickly, but neatly, unlike I am, swirl it around quite thinly. You want to try and cover up the holes as quickly as possible because it's so thin that you need to get in there before it starts to dry out. But you can do what I frequently do when I've been sloppy, which is go back in there and just fill in the gaps. Now this is purely for aesthetic purposes. If I was not making this for a video, I would just go ahead and eat it as is because there's there's something quite beautiful about sloppy, almost street food, uh, especially when you're dealing with, uh, with Indian ingredients. Now begins the waiting game. As I said in the original recipe, this takes quite some time to cook. I'm not going to make you wait with me. I'm going to speed up the video uh, just to give you a sense of time passing. At about the three minute mark, I have gone in and I have flipped over the flatbread as if it were a pancake. What you're looking for in the flatbread is a kind of powdery residue. Uh, don't be shy. Get in there and carefully poke the bread and make sure that there's no more gelatinous bits in between. The bread should be hard and, and powdery and just keep going, cooking at low heat until that happens. If you're in a rush or like me have really little patience, you can just slide them out of the pan and into the oven and finish them in there. That way you can do many in one go. And that's it.